It was six, seven o'clock of an early spring evening in 1968, and I was sitting on the cold vinyl floor of a studio on Sunset Boulevard, watching a band called The Doors record a rhythm track. On the whole, my attention was only minimally engaged by the preoccupations of rock and roll bands. I had already heard about Acid as a transitional stage, and also about the Maharishi, and even about Universal Love, and after a while, it all sounded like Marmalade Skies to me. But the doors were different. The doors interested me. The doors seemed unconvinced that love was brotherhood in the Karma Sutra. The doors' music insisted that love was sex, and sex was death, and therein lies salvation. The doors were the Norman Mailers of the top 40, missionaries of apocalyptic sex. Break on through, their lyrics urged, and light my fire, and... On this evening in 1968, they were gathered together in uneasy symbiosis to make their third album, and the studio was too cold and the lights were too bright, and there were masses of wires and banks of the ominous blinking electronic circuitry with which musicians lived so easily. There were three of the four doors. There was a bass player borrowed from a band called Clear Light. There were the producer and the engineer and the road manager and a couple of girls and a Siberian husky named Nikki with one gray eye and one gold. There were paper bags half filled with hard boiled eggs and chicken livers and cheeseburgers and empty bottles of apple juice and California rose. There was everything and everybody the doors needed to cut the rest of the third album except one thing, the fourth door, the lead singer, Jim Morrison, a 24 year old graduate of UCLA who wore black vinyl pants and no underwear and tended to, to suggest some range of the possible just beyond a suicide pact. It was Morrison who had described the Doors as erotic politicians. It was Morrison who had defined the group's interest as anything about revolt, disorder, chaos, about activity that appears to have no meaning. It was Morrison who got arrested in Miami in December of 1967 for giving an indecent performance. It was Morrison who wrote most of the Doors lyrics, the peculiar character of which was to reflect either an ambiguous paranoia or a quite unambiguous insistence upon the love death as the ultimate high. And it was Morrison who was missing. It was Ray Manzarek and Robbie Krieger and John Densmore who made the doors sound the way they sounded. And maybe it was Manzarek and Krieger and Densmore who made 17 out of 20 interviewees on American Bandstand prefer the doors over all the other bands. But it was Morrison who got up there in his black vinyl pants with no underwear and projected the idea. <clears throat> and it was Morrison they were waiting for now. Hey, listen, the engineer said. I was listening to an FM station on the way over here. They played three door songs. First they played Backdoor Man, and then Love Me Two Times and Light My Fire. I heard it, Densmore muttered. I heard it. So what's wrong with somebody playing three of your songs? This cat decides to dedicate it to his family. Yeah, to his family? To his family. Real crass. Ray Manzarek was hunched over a Gibson keyboard. You think Morrison's going to come back? He asked to no one in particular. No one answered. So we can do some vocals, Manzarek said. The producer was working with the tape of the rhythm track they had just recorded. I hope so, he said without looking up. Yeah, Manzarek said. So do I. My leg had gone to sleep, but I did not stand up. Unspecific tension seemed to be rendering everyone in the room catatonic. The producer played back the rhythm track. The engineer said that he wanted to do his deep breathing exercises. Manzarek ate a hard-boiled egg. Tennyson made a mantra out of his own name, he said to the engineer. I don't know if he said Tennyson, 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 or Alfred, 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 or Alfred Lord Tennyson, but anyway, he did it. Maybe he just said Lord, Lord, Lord. Groovy, the clear light bass player said. He was an amiable enthusiast, not at all a door in spirit. I wonder what Blake said, Manzarek mused. Too bad Morrison's not here. Morrison would know. It was a long while later. Morrison arrived. He had on his black vinyl pants, and he sat down on a leather couch in front of the four big blank speakers and closed his eyes. The curious aspect of Morrison's arrival was this. No one acknowledged it. Robbie Krieger continued working out a guitar passage. John Densmore tuned his drums. 
Manzarek sat at the control console and twirled a corkscrew and let a girl rub his shoulders. The girl did not look at Morrison, although he was in her direct line of sight. An hour or so passed and still no one had spoken to Morrison. Then Morrison spoke to Manzarek. He spoke almost in a whisper, as if he were resting the words from behind some disabling aphasia. It's an hour to West Covina, he said. I was thinking maybe we should spend the night out there after we play. Manzarek put down the corkscrew. Why, he said, instead of coming back. Manzarek shrugged. We were planning to come back. While I was thinking, we could rehearse out there. Manzarek said nothing. We could get in a rehearsal. There's a holiday inn next door. We could do that, Manzarek said. Or we could rehearse Sunday in town. I guess so, Morrison paused. Will the place be ready to rehearse Sunday? Manzarek looked at him for a while. No, he said then. I counted the control knobs on the electric console. There were 76. I was unsure in whose favor the dialogue had been resolved, or if it had been resolved at all. Robbie Krieger picked out his guitar and then said that he needed a fuzz box. The producer suggested that he borrow one from the Buffalo Springfield, who were recording in the next studio. Krieger shrugged. Morrison sat down again on the leather couch and leaned back. He lit a match. He studied the flame a while and then very slowly, very deliberately, lowered it to the fly of his black vinyl pants. Manzarek watched him. The girl who was rubbing Manzarek's shoulders did not look at anyone. There was a sense that no one was going to leave the room, ever. It would be some weeks before the doors finished recording this album. I did not see it through.